This is Texas, cradle of our Army's Air Force. This is an AAF field, too. But over headquarters rides a strange little girl gremlin called Pippinella. And out of those buses are stepping girls. Girls who give a new angle to an Air Force story. They're WASPs, Women's Air Force service pilots. In the early years of World War II, the United States had an extreme shortage of pilots. This is not the time when women should be patient. We are in a war, and we need to fight it with our ability and every weapon possible. Women pilots, in this particular case, are a weapon waiting to be used. With battles raging in both the European and Pacific theaters, two bold, forward-thinking female pilots lobbied the military to create a squadron of women who would ferry planes from factories to domestic airfields, freeing the male pilots for combat. Despite initial resistance from the military, two rival groups of female pilots were established in 1942 and in 1944 were merged into the Women's Air Force Service Pilots, or WASPs. Alberta Hunt Nicholson was one of these pioneering WASPs. Born in Baker, Oregon in 1914, she took her first ride in a Ford Trimotor at age 13. After graduating from high school in Oregon, young Alberta earned a degree in music and education from the University of Utah in 1937. She taught elementary school in Huntsville and Hooper, Utah for a few years, then headed the stenography bureau at the university. It was then that she got her first chance to learn to fly. One day, Dr. Baker, who was in engineering, came in with a notice to be typed up and mimeographed and said, this is for a class that's been given at West High, the written part of the pilot's license. Why don't you go out and take the class? <laughs> so I did. Alberta finished 13th out of a class of 95 young men, but three of the men failed their physicals, which made Alberta eligible for a federal scholarship but her application came back from Washington stamped, no females. Not one to give up, Alberta took flying lessons on her own, earning the money by teaching piano and taking in sewing. She received her private pilot's license on October 13, 1942. As fate would have it, Alberta met one of the women in charge of organizing female pilots for the government. She had already exceeded the number of flying hours needed to qualify, so she signed up and shortly thereafter received a telegram telling her to report to Sweetwater, Texas to become a WASP. There were 1,803 of us in the program, civil service pilots unclassified. I think we were paid $275 a month or something like that. But we had to have uniforms, slacks and a white shirt. And we had the same routine as the male pilots. Very simply and seriously, the WASPs, girls like Mary Abbott, maybe a little younger, maybe older, are willing to plow into as rugged a six-month stretch as anything handed to women in the whole war effort. Map reading and physics, navigation and code, with strict AAF exams in each, too. For men, it would be tough. It's tough for girls, too. Our mission was to do the jobs here in the States and release the men to go to combat. Uh, a lot of the girls ferried. We might do a strafing mission in the morning, a tow target, uh, a towing target in the afternoon, and then flying twin-engine beach aircraft at night to do searchlight missions, teaching the boys how to use the searchlights. Because what we were doing was uh, was helping in their training to be prepared for what was going to happen when they did go to combat. Alberta's mission was a bit riskier. Stationed at Luke Field in Arizona, she was assigned to test fly repaired aircraft to make sure they were safe for male cadets. By all accounts, Alberta Hunt Nicholson was fearless. After the war ended, the WASPs were disbanded to open up jobs for the men returning home from overseas. In spite of their invaluable contributions to the war effort, the WASPs were never made regular military. It took over 30 years of lobbying for them to be recognized as veterans and to receive the same benefits as the men who served. Once her time with the WASPs was finished, Alberta returned home to Utah. She owned her own airplane and held instructor and commercial licenses. She even competed in eight transcontinental all-female air races, known as Powder Puff Derbies, which were sponsored by the 99s, an organization exclusively for women pilots founded by Amelia Earhart. Friends remember Alberta Hunt Nicholson's life after the war as filled with generosity and community service. 
she worked as a recreational therapist at the VA hospital in Salt Lake and continued to fly until age and illness made it too risky. Alberta Hunt Nicholson was a woman who pursued her dreams no matter what obstacles presented themselves.